Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. Now this is the second and last part of a series where I explain what CNC is. And if you haven't watched the first part already, you can check it out at the first link down in the description or in the little eye up there. And this video will make a whole lot more sense as I'm gonna continue right where I left off the last time. Now we finished with the CAM software and exported our G-code. Now let's talk a bit about that G-code. If you open up the G-code in any text editor, you're gonna see that it is very, very simple. And remember when I talked to you last time, I said that CNC machines are stupid? Well, they get really get simple code. You have your general G commands. Now the G commands that you will see in there are basic commands that are fixed inside of the machine, specifically in the controller, that maybe you turn on the coolant or you go to the home position or you home the axis or things like that. So when I told you that you have to select the right controller, the G commands are one thing that vary between different scenes and controllers. And then if you look at the main part, you basically have X, Y and Z coordinates, if you have a three axis machine, which basically tell the CNC machine where to go. Maybe the first position is zero, zero, then X moves up by one, so it goes one to X, and then the next is maybe X one, Y zero and Z one, and it goes up one to Z. And so it's very simple. The machine just has a coordinate net and it moves around to the next point. You can also see some other letters behind that. For example, for the speed, how fast the machine travels, usually written with an F command, or also how fast the spindle is supposed to turn, usually S, or other variables that you need for your machine. But when you add these simple commands, one after the other, after maybe a couple of lines or a couple hundred, a couple thousand, or even a couple hundred thousand lines, you will get your finished part. This is the, pretty much the same code used in 3D printing as well, if you have maybe heard about this a little bit more. Only that because 3D models are a lot more complicated in 3D printing, usually you have quite a bit more lines there. Also, I told you about 3D machining last time and how it is more complicated to generate. And that's because 3D machining has curves and other 3D complex points to go. And because the machine only can go straight from one to the other point, if you have a curve, it's gonna have to define a lot of points and th therefore generate a lot of lines. So if you're doing 3D machining, oftentimes you have extremely long G-code files. Now because all the machines oftentimes didn't have that big of a memory, they were limited to a certain amount of G-code lines. Also, if you're using some free controller software where there is a paid option, you oftentimes have limitations about how many lines of G-code you can have. So 3D machining is something that you have to keep in mind your limitations of the machine you own. Now speaking about the controller, depending on what machine you have and also kind of on what level your machine is, you either have a PC connected to a very rather stupid or simple controller. In that case, you have some software on the PC that is gonna send the commands to the CNC machines in little packets, and so the CNC only converts these commands into the movement. But when you're talking about some big CNC machines or VMCs, then you're gonna have usually a controller that is integrated into the machine. And these then are almost like computers, but they run some specialized software where you just load the G-code in there and the software sends the G-code to itself. Also things like homing the machines and 
tramming things in and many other things are controlled through that controller or if you're using a PC through that software. So while it can be handy to have just a controller attached to your machine with all the buttons and displays that you need, having a PC is also very versatile as you can just use a mouse and click on anything you want or even use a touchscreen. Now as most of you are probably on the rather tighter budget if you're planning on getting a CNC yourself, in many cases you're gonna use a computer with a more simple controller attached to it. And on the computer like the main program that you're gonna use if you're on a budget is Mark 3. Or maybe if it's very modern, you're gonna use Mac 4 as well. These are, this is some, a piece of software that is rather cheap, but has a lot of features. Now Mac 3 is quite old and I think it also only runs on 32-bit architecture, but still it is one of the most used hobbyist CNC software. And that's because it just has so many plugins and scripts that people wrote for it that many machines are dependent on it. For example, if you build your machine yourself and you have an automatic tool changer, you're gonna have to coach the tool changer yourself because the CAM software just says change tool 40 to 42. And then your controller is gonna have to know how to do that. So it's gonna have to move over to your tool rack, to drop off the tool, go over to the new tool, load it in, and all that is gonna have to be handled through your controller. So even though Mac 4 is a lot more modern and should be used in like any new things, many still prefer Mac 3 because it has a way broader support. Also Mac 4 is quite a bit more expensive but that price is probably gonna come down with time as well. Now, if you wanna go a bit simpler and maybe you're just starting off like I am, then you can also use just a basic G-code center. Like for example, universal G-code center. These programs are very simple. I can just load in my G-code Send it from there. There are also some easy commands like homing your machines. You can set the zeros. But for example, I can't define any tool changes or offsets or any cr other crazy stuff inside this program. But on the flip side, it's very easy to use and lightweight. Now, the counterpart to your software is the controller. Now, on my machine, I'm just using an Arduino with a software called Gurbel added onto it. This is an open source software that has been developed for cheap DIY CNC machines. Now to my knowledge it isn't compatible with Mac 3 and so you're reliant on more easier, cheaper and also quite a bit simpler programs to send your G-code. But it is one of the cheapest ways to get a CNC machine up and running. The other very common controller on the cheap end is that you just have uh, basically a PCB breakout that is connected to a parallel port and you're gonna probably gonna have to use a USB to parallel adapter for that and there it's basically just a breakout to for the different motors that you then gonna con connect to the motor controllers. In both these cases the hardware is under 50 bucks so it's very cheap and mostly from China. Of course there are some more advanced controllers as you climb up the ladder and these are gonna be more expensive, have more features, be more reliable. But I'm not gonna go too deep into the detail on this. Now after a controller the only thing you need is to amplify the signal given by the controller for the motors. As the controller probably isn't gonna be able to drive huge cyber motors. So there is a motor driver in between that takes the signal and amplifies it almost like an audio amplifier. You're also going to connect like air valves or your spindle and your coolant or whatever else you want to automate to your controller. 
so the electronics can get quite involved on more advanced CNC machines. And then after you've considered all of these things I just told you about, you can finally hit cycle start and the machine is gonna run and do whatever you programmed it to do. And that is a very great feeling if then also everything works out. Now, of course, I wasn't able to cover every little detail in this series and also I don't know many things. I would consider myself a beginner as only as well, so if you have questions you can leave them down below and maybe I can answer them or you can go over to cnczone.com which is a very great CNC forum where they have many many active users. It's I think it's the largest CNC forum in the world and there are many articles that you can browse ranging from very beginners to professionals discussing some very detailed things. And if you liked this video you can leave a like down below and also write a comment if you have any criticism or future videos you want me to do. I've also a second channel that you can see linked down below where I just uploaded a brand new vlog. And if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you can check it out. Of course, also my social media accounts and Amazon and eBay affiliate links are linked down below for you to check out. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and until next time.